Let's talk about monster suits. Hey Ranger Nation, welcome back to another video. And today I really wanted to talk about how monster suits in the Super Sentai, as well as Power Rangers, kind of have a time limit, um, which makes it really hard for them to adapt uh, Power Rangers. Um, so yeah, this will be a quick video, I hope, but we're gonna kind of talk about it because a lot of people, uh, they, when they see this sort of stuff, they turn around and go, oh, um, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Um, they, they talk about how like a Super Sentai can be adapted, but there is a time limit which I think Hasbro know about and they use to their advantage. So if you like this sort of content and you want to see more, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, as well as that cheeky notification bell, and let's just get started. Back in the day, we saw how beautiful the monsters were, the, the detailing of them, and it was absolutely fantastic. You know, you'd feel like that monster was really there, terrorizing Angel Grove as well as other places around the Power Rangers universe. And it, they really kind of make you, like, it makes them stand out. So everyone has like their kind of favorite monster. Um, I kind of don't, <laughs> but most people have their favorite monster. If you have a favorite monster, let me know down below in the comments. Now, every every year we would get, say, Mighty Morphing for three years. Then we get Zeo, Turbo, In Space, Lost Galaxy and these would kind of roll on every single year. So literally the way that Japan would do it is as soon as they finished filming this series, they would then ship all that sort of stuff over straight away and the monster suits would be in kind of perfect condition. You know, maybe a little beat up from transport or the rangers beat them up, but majority of the time the monster suits were absolutely fine and they were used again for the next load of filming, etc., etc., which at that time was great. But since the band basically brought back the brand and Nickelodeon turned around to make things every two years, that then started putting a timer on these monster suits, which was a massive big pain. With the suits degradation, because the suits start to degrade, Rangers are absolutely fine. You can redo the fabric, you can redo the helmets, you know, at a very low cost price. But monster suits can take a lot more kind of damage and they can be a lot to repair if say you had a giant monster that had a cut straight down the thing you'd either have to maybe replace the arm or you'd have to find some way to kind of seal it which again kind of costs money if you had to redo everything now i'm not talking about little nicks or little like little bumps everywhere it's literally if you have a giant cut on the monster's arm you may would have to replace the entire thing or you may have to replace the entire suit com uh, completely, which again would cost a lot of money. Now, when Hasbro bought the brand, one thing that they really wanted to do was focus on Beast Morphus to make it amazing, to make it look good. But because obviously by the time we were in the timeline, you know, it'd been almost 10, nine years, whatever it was, um, since Go Buster was made. So they had to repair and make the suits look brand spanking new. And that cost Hasbro quite a lot of money. Why do they did it? do it? Because they wanted to make sure that you got the exact same experience that watching say Go Buster, as well as the monsters of that particular era um, to actually look okay. And that was the main thing. But as we kind of go on, Sentais that, weren't, that may not get adapted if the split can, uh, doesn't happen. So like Torquija, Kira Major, anything like that even q ranger the ones that you love the most after time the monsters may just get too badly damaged and thus therefore it may not get made and that is such a sucky thing if that happens now if you look at the monster suits in dino fury they are pretty much brand new because they get shipped over because rear soldier had just come out that year that they decided to do it which makes it a lot easier and a lot less expensive to actually have these entire suits which is a good thing because we got what we got we got what we want now when i see arguments on online when people say like this series is going to get adapted this series is going to do it i generally kind of think that they won't because you know, if Hasbro puts in a lot of money and gets little return from the ratings that we've seen, then in theory, they're not gonna put that much money into the suits. Not unless they decide to change and get rid of half the, the episodes and kind of focus maybe on 20. And if Netflix is gonna buy the series, then I think that we're not gonna get as many episodes, which could be a good thing where they could just redo the suits. But I have a feeling that they won't want to put that much money into it because if the split does happen, that they move on, then why would you want to do it if you continued on with live action 
why would you want to kind of put money into a suit that you're just going to bin and it isn't going to look that good you know they're going to bin them you know they're going to bin the suits now with netflix i think that we may get two monsters in it so they may put the time in to repair it uh, if that's the case, then obviously that's how you could have the series moving forward, that they need those monsters in if they continue an adaptation or if they just bring them back willy nilly. Now, this will obviously put more cost into the series uh, all the time. So you are instantly putting more money. You're instantly making these suits carry on as normal. But is that a good thing? I'm hoping that if the split doesn't happen and Netflix is willing to put money into the series, that maybe we'll get maybe two series back to back that we're willing to get, say, maybe whatever adaptation is next. And then the series after that gets adapted so that they're running both on both. So it kind of makes things easier rather than say, like if they adapt Q Ranger as well as Torquija, we'd get one series of Torquija going uh, that they film in one location and in the other location they're doing Q-Ranger and we're getting use of these suits and we're playing catch up quite quickly but from the looks of it from the amount of money put in I don't think that this is going to happen that's kind of the brief thing now both Toye, Simon Bennett and I think Jason Bishop have come out and said that the monster suits degrade after around about five years and I feel like if Bandai was still in charge I think that we still would have got the suits coming up like say um q ranger would have been next if the suits have fallen apart then there is no way that we're going to get them back and i feel like that sentai will never get adapted because you know you obviously want it to be a true representation of it so obviously you need the monster from that episode and if you replace the monsters with something completely different then you're not getting the full experience of that adaptation so i feel like the series that we want the most are just going to fall away and they won't get adapted but that's literally what I kind of think on it. I kind of really wanted to make a video. We got around about five years for each monster suit before it disappears and literally turns to dust. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So what are your thoughts on this? Um, do you uh, wish that Netflix would put more money into making these monster suits or do you think of something else? Let me know down below in the comments. If you like this sort of content and you want to see more, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as well as that cheeky notification bell to be notified when more videos drop. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. チャンネルをサポートしてくれてありがとう。チャンネル登録、高評価、お願い。